The Bugatti Chiron, renowned as one of the most exceptional hypercars in the world, had humble beginnings, rooted in collaboration and innovation. After VW Group acquired Bugatti in 1998, along with other prestigious brands like Lamborghini, Bentley and Rolls-Royce, the automotive giant set out to resurrect Bugatti's legacy and create the fastest and most extravagantly engineered cars ever produced. Volkswagen wasted no time in showcasing their vision for the future of Bugatti. Within a year, they unveiled three groundbreaking concept supercars. The first of these was the EB118, a luxury GT coupe that made its debut at the 1998 Paris Motor Show. It introduced design cues that would endure and become synonymous with Bugatti. Following the EB118, the EB218 was revealed in 1999, featuring a four-door body that foreshadowed Bentley's future models. And this is a car that I would love to make a video on as well, so if that's something you would like to see, let me know down below. However, the real gem among the trio was the 18-3 Chiron concept, named after the legendary Bugatti racing driver Louis Chiron. Now the Chiron borrowed the Lamborghini Diablo VT chassis and four-wheel drive system as a base to work from. This platform, which was readily available due to Lamborghini's sales decline in the late 1990s, provided a solid foundation for Bugatti's ambitious project. But what truly set the Chiron apart was the insane powertrain. This thing was powered by a W18 engine. Yes, you heard me correctly, an 18-cylinder engine. You see, Ferdinand Pietsch, the visionary CEO of Volkswagen, was known for his audacious ideas that pushed the boundaries of automotive engineering. And in 1997, Ferdinand conceived a daring plan to create an 18-cylinder engine by combining three six-cylinder engines. This concept was not his first ambitious endeavor, nor would it be his last. And during a trip to Japan alongside Carl Heinz Newman, Volkswagen's head of powertrain development at the time, Ferdinand sketched his visionary engine on the back of an envelope. However, the exact vehicle that would house this extraordinary power plant remained a mystery until the release of these Bugattis. And this 18-cylinder engine would be in a true W configuration. Now you might think VW already makes like W configuration engines with the W12 and the W16 that's in the Bugatti. Well, let me explain. This is, I already did a bit of like explaining on a whiteboard, so I'm just going to show you what I mean. So this is a bit different. This is a true W configuration engine. Let me think, what's the difference between the W configuration engines they make now and this specific one that we are talking about in this video? Now I'm going to have to explain by using the VR6 engine. You might think, what does the VR6 engine have to do with anything? Well, let me show you. So if you got the, uh, on this side, you've got the VR6 engine, which is a V engine, but it's very tightly compacted. So you've got a small degree V configuration engine. So there's a 15 degree V6 engine and the, the, the pistons run very close to each other. So what they did with the W12 and even the W16 is you've got two of these motors combined. So you've got a V6, and a V6 to make a V12, or a W12. And then for the W18, you've got eight and eight. But with the W18 in this engine, it had three six cylinder engines. So that made a true W with these, I don't know what you call that. That's not really a W, uh, but you understand what I mean with the true W configuration in this engine. Hopefully that makes more sense why this is a true W configuration. And this is still called a W, but it's not really a W. It's more just two V8 or two V6s combined. Yeah. Look, I wouldn't want to be the mechanic that has to work on this thing, but damn, it looks cool. This 6.3 liter, 72 valve engine weighed about 315 kilograms, and it was a marvel of engineering. Imagine just how insane this thing's crankshaft had to look. Now this thing was mounted sideways with one cylinder bank pointing up and left, the middle one up and right, and the right hand bank extending to the right side. A again, imagine doing a valve stem seal job on a car with 72 valves. Sorry, this engine really breaks my mind. Although this engine lacked turbochargers in the concept stage, it still produced a formidable 547 horsepower and 390 foot pounds of torque, which isn't a lot of power, especially when you take the levels of engineering into account. Um, that's a lot of work for 550 horsepower. However, despite the initial 
promise and impressive performance figures, the W18 engine faced significant obstacles that prevented its production. Its tall profile posed challenges for packaging, especially considering the future need for turbochargers. Additionally, the engine struggled to work reliably with gearboxes. As a result, Bugatti had to abandon the W18 engine. But not before it showcased its potential, including a top speed run which achieved a speed of 205 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of just 3.5 seconds. Then in 1999, the 18-3 Chiron was superseded by the 18-4 Veyron concept. The first Veyron concept also had an 18-cylinder motor, but in this concept the engine featured a more refined design. But the 18-cylinder engine was still a challenge to use in a production vehicle, and so the Veyron concept underwent further development, leading to the unveiling of the 16-4 Veyron concept in 2000. This improved model showcased the quad-turbocharged W16 engine, capable of producing a mind-boggling 1001 horsepower. With this remarkable engine, the Veyron became Bugatti's first production model and solidified its place in automotive history as one of the fastest and most extraordinary cars ever built. And that engine is so remarkable that I actually made a whole video on it that was specifically dedicated to the engine and the crazy levels of engineering that went into creating it. The Chiron's influence on the Veyron was evident in various design elements that carried over, such as the reclined horseshoe grille, triple xenon headlights and V-banked nose. Then, the Chiron's 8-spoke wheels were inspired by the Type 35B and it also made the way to the Veyron. Inside the Chiron, a luxurious and tastefully appointed cockpit awaited. Tan and dark blue leather upholstery adorned the seats, complemented by brushed aluminium inserts. The instrument cluster behind the steering wheel featured primary gauges for engine speed and road speed, while the center console housed most of the supplementary instrumentation. The Bugatti Chiron, born from the collaboration between Bugatti and Lamborghini, set the stage for the extraordinary Veyron and subsequent Bugatti models. Despite its challenges and the ultimate abandonment of the W18 engine, the Chiron's impact on the automotive industry cannot be overstated. I mean, without its development, cars like the original Veyron would never come to be. As we marvel at the astounding performance and unparalleled luxury of the Bugatti Chiron today, we can trace its lineage back to the Lamborghini Diablo and the visionary minds behind Bugatti and Volkswagen. This is a damn cool car, powered by one of the craziest engines ever. But let me know down below what you thought of the video, and the car, and the engine. I think this is the stupidest and coolest engine at the same time. I mean the engineering behind this thing. But yeah, let me know down below what you thought of the video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.